Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to understand a real world use case of how Apache Kafka is used in a financial world. And the use case that we are going to discuss now is about real time transactional processing. Let us try to visualize this architectural flow now. So, we have different kinds of payments or transactions done on a financial service or a financial gateway. The first thing is the payment gateway. That is nothing but the credit card transactions or debit card transactions or UPI payments, QR code scans, anything. Then we have the online banking transactions that take place. Then we have the cash transaction that takes place through withdrawal of money from ATMs. Nonetheless, all of these are some kind of transaction and it has to be logged in real time. Well, one good part about this is every kind of transaction is also an event. So, when one of these takes place, what happens is all of this information flows to one particular topic. Let us consider this as a transaction topic. Now, what is a topic? We are going to discuss all of this in detail in the future videos. But one thing is certain. A topic is a place where all similar events related to a service can be stored. Now, what happens next once we have this data in this particular topic? We will consume this information. Now, why do we have to consume this? Because we want to see if this particular transaction is in compliance with our service. And then we have to see if this transaction is fraud related transaction. And finally, we also have to update the balance sheet of this particular account. Hence, all of this takes place inside Kafka. So, Kafka is again acting as a central nervous system where it is storing the events or we can say it is storing the relevant events in what we call as a topic. So, all the transactions flows into the transaction topic. Then, we consume all of this information, do some pre-processing and finally, we update this information to the account update topic. The moment you have this updated in the account update topic, let us say that you get a notification that certain amount was either credited or debited from your account. Now, if this is some kind of fraudulent transactions or a transaction that is not under the compliance service that we hold in the bank, then you might get a notification that this amount is on hold. Now, imagine how many transactions happens around our world, either it could be from payment gateway, online banking, ATM, every second. Well, we don't know, but we know it's a huge number. And Kafka is at the center of all of this. Well, this is one use case related to how Kafka is getting used in a financial service. We'll also discuss one more interesting use case in our next video. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how Kafka is working in an EV charging station. Well, an electric vehicle charging station is very common nowadays, right? But in the backbone of it, it does do a lot of things to make sure the owners of the electrical vehicle can charge their vehicles at the right time in the right place and be notified about the seat. Now, what do I mean by this? Let us try to understand that now. So, we have a charging station. Now, in this charging station, we would need to know how many charging stations are free so that we can take our electrical vehicle or EV vehicle there and get it charged. At the same time, when we charge our vehicle, we would like to know for how long did we charge our vehicle and get billed accordingly. So, what happens here is we have two kinds of events. That is the status of the charging station itself and then for charging stations that have been used, we would need to know for how long and bill the particular user accordingly. So, again, these two are certain events. Now, if you observe carefully, these two are sent to two separate topics because they are separate events, right? Can they be sent to the same topic? Definitely they can be, but it doesn't need to be. We can separate this to make sure that the further processing can become easier. So, if there is a charging station which is used, 
then all of this information goes to the charging session topic. And then if there is a charging station that is free, then this information goes to station status topic. Now you might be wondering, well, how does this information flow? Well, this happens with IoT devices. Basically, we have sensors that are going to sense this change and are going to trigger such events and send it to Kafka. Now, what happens after that? So, let us say that somebody is using our AV charging station. So, the moment they start charging, we get an event and we are going to start our counter. That is, for how long have they been charging it? And finally, we also have the status of our charging station. Now, imagine there is a charging station where there are 15 chargers. Now, if I were to go and charge my vehicle there, I would like to know if there is any charging station free today or not. Or, I might want to book a particular charging station, so when I arrive, it is free. Now, all of this I will know only when I am getting a real-time streaming update of the status of our charging machines. Like I said before, all of these events can be sent using Internet of Things or IoT devices that relies on sensors. Now, let us imagine that all the information related to the station status topic can be aggregated and we can send this to an app where a consumer can see it. Now, next is somebody have used the charging station and they finish charging. Immediately, we would want to send this information to another topic that is charging payment system. So, here there is an information that this particular vehicle used this charging machine for how many minutes or how many hours and then we bill this particular user accordingly. Now, what happens to the station status report? It can be accessible by our users using an app to know which charging station is free. Nonetheless, it can also be used by the charging station administrators to also monitor the whole charging station itself. And the good part is, they can do it remotely. Well, I hope you understand how Kafka again is acting as a backbone to hold all of these real-time events and make sure it can be consumed in real-time and then also display all of this information in real-time if required. As I mentioned, there is a lot of companies that have been using Kafka now and it is a de facto tool as of today in any event-driven architecture design that gets made. Well, I hope this example was useful also for you to understand the real-world use case of Apache Kafka.